lecture. Um, our last talk on this panel uh, is by Livia Paldi. Um, the title of her intervention is Active Archive, Slow Institution, 2017 to 2020. Livia Paldi is the curator of visual arts at the Project Arts Center in Dublin. Previously, she was the director of BAC Baltic Arts Center in Visby and chief curator at the Kunsthalle in Budapest between 2005 and 2011. She has organized um, um, many talks, discussions, workshops, and exhibitions, and edited several books and exhibition catalogs. She lives and works in Dublin. So thanks a lot, and thanks to the organizers for the invitation. Um, I would like to start with a quote from Berlin and Los Angeles based in Schaber, with whom I had the pleasure to work for the, the document in 2012. The quote, I'm starting with the assumption that the archive is not only a place of storage, but also a place of production, but our relation to the past is materialized and where our present writes itself into the future. Thus, accordingly, I understand the archive as a place of negotiation and writing. Active Archive Slow Institution began with a series of questions, those in relation to the status of visual arts programming a project, as well as those anchored to my own learning in relation to a wider cultural context of Ireland, which I moved in spring 2017. Rereading chapters or fragments of chapters of institutional history, or rather histories, supports a nuanced understanding of professional trajectories, the emancipation of the arts in Ireland, and the changing relationship um, of project to wider institutional, political, social, and urban contexts. I look at these preceding artistic structure and operative configurations in order to seek advice on sustainable future models. Sorry. Should be automatic, but it's not. Um, to seek advice on sustainable future models in connection to the new development plan put forward in 2017 at So Island's oldest multidisciplinary art center having survived the punishing recession and thus identifying with the changing cultural policy environment and changing conditions of productions, the changing needs among artists, audiences, and funders. Thus the archival inquiry process, the studying and interrogation of documents, and archival environments and related artistic projects has supported a more complex understanding of the history of the center from the perspective of timely and pressuring contemporary issues and urgencies. As in the case of most archives, the POC archives or Project Art Center archives also lead to parallel archives and sub-histories, including the development of contemporary art and its institutions in Ireland and the changing political and social context, the history of artist cooperatives, artist run spaces, studio facilities, urban cultural development history like the Temple Park Culture Quarter development in the Celtic Tiger, which is a term referring to the economy of the Republic uh, of Ireland with the mid 90s and until the late 2000-ish, uh, 2000-ish, a period of rapid real economic growth fueled by foreign direct investment. It also includes the history of the Arts Council and funding in Ireland, transforming conditions of artistic labor production, precarization within the neoliberal expectation economy, political agency, the history of feminism, and LGBTQ rights in Ireland. Um, beside learning about the exhibition histories and strategies of working within a multi-genre organization, the archives also make one looking at how curatorial and artistic leadership roles a multi-genre cultural institution have changed or transformed due to various pressures. Project Art Center was initially created as a temporal and singular artistic event in the form of three-week festival titled Project 67 at the Gate Theater. Uh, next year saw the forming of a cooperative, non-profit distributing gallery. The theatrical interest of the project, which is now actually very similar to the Truffle House of Art here in Budapest, which has two theater and performance spaces and the gallery, um, concentrated at the beginning, the first two years, showcasing visual artistic works. Um, after migrating to the city, the, the, the space where we currently are, the old space opened in March 1975. Later, the site was purchased. On April 19, uh, 19th, 1982, fire destroyed part of the premises for forcing the closure of the cinema, the loss of the foyer and office accommodation. 
The abundance of files and records were also destroyed. The former space of the current gallery was referred to as the burnt out space and was not restored until the building's operation, uh, ceased operation in 1998. In preparation of the period of redevelopment project when the new building opened in 2000 June, um, the period that I was particularly interested in was the 1999 period when the, the, basically the building was closed. And during this period, Project Visual Arts Director Valerie Connor, um, who is a curator, writer, and educator, commissioned an organized program of project described as Offsite. These were produced at various other locations and in various media. Ten projects were produced around Dublin and one in Galway. Artists including Virk, Seth Talentire, Ronan McCrea, Daniel Josbury, Paddy Jolly, Sandra Johnston, Pete Smithson, Tina O'Connell, Tony Patrickson, Fergus Kelly, and Dorothy Cross. The final event at the old building was an artwork by Morris O'Connell. The final event at the old building was an artwork by Morris O'Connell, who was an artist in residence since July 1997, involved artists, performance, and musicians who wanted to do something to mark the closure ending in the stage Sony Lumiere Fire. The demolishing project, 39 East Essex Street, is closed to place between 2 and 14 February 1998, marking and celebrating the redevelopment of project at Temple Bar and accentuating its significant history. In an email a few months preceding his death, O'Connell sent me a draft of the soap bubble and recalled that the demolishing project was a conversation. I spent, he wrote, quote, a vast time trying to see how the site might break its way into the future, given it was intertwined in so many significant practices. My role was really trying to crack it open once again and so even more could emerge and new directions could be explored. The Project Art Center collection contains 160 boxes, including documents and prints artifacts related to the activities of project between 1967 and 2003 were donated to the National Library of Ireland in 2006. The Project Art Center papers collection list was prepared by archivist Barry Holohan and the National Irish Visual Arts Library, NIVAL, which is a public research resource dedicated to the documentation of the 20th and 21st century of Century Irish Visual Art and Design and housed at NCED, the National College of Art and Design. Also holds some folders and also there are still boxes in the center and in private ownership. When I first visited Nival in summer 2017 to view documents in Project Art Center, I came across a condition report and feasibility study for a future archive at project that had been researched and written by artist Brian Hound, the former founding member of the Artist Collective Blue Fund funded in 8990 together with Evelyn Byrne, Brian Cross, Tom Green, Jeffrey Irvine, Valerie Connor, and Kevin Kelly. It aimed at setting up a mixed media production studio, video, film, performance, sound, and facilitate technical support and networking of time-based arts, as well as presentation of moving image work with planned government funding. Commissioned in March 1998 by the then director of project, Fiat Motanel, the study aimed to present the board a report on the condition of the existing building as well as a plan for the establishment of an autonomous flood and fireproof archive space for the new building, which was due to open in two years' time. The assignment was based on Hans' archive-related practice as well as his long history with the organization. Four of the members were invited from Blue Fund to have solo exhibitions and also work on a project to close down the building. Each member had a different interest and way of engagement with pro project archive and the historical material. Valerie Connor described by Hand's approach as more catalog catalogizing, systemizing, taking stock of the records, while hers is drawn towards the materiality of the archive before it gets organized. The condition I would describe by looking at some photographs from a few years later, archive as material as disastrous landscape. In their so-called interdisciplinary collaboration proposal, Blue Funk proposed Porta Cabin, an insulated wire and heatable four-person office, space of site office to be brought and set up in front of the old project. The minimal space for shared activities, um, discursive platform and form of debate. The group proposal positioned Project Art Center as an exemplary case study, especially as it undergoes transformation the following year. This artwork is the result of collaboration and dialogue between the artist and the phenomenon of Project Art Center since its inception. 
The aim of this focus is to initiate, stimulate a creative inquiry into the concept, history, and value of the art center. The collaboration begins with research into projects own archives and interviews with former personal and investigates the questions of space building and creativity, censorship, authorship, location, and context, and examines the function of avant-garde, end of quote. A related document at quote, all parties involved are working through a process of transforming in the art space and the collaboration in ongoing and evolving. When we talked about the possible option for the Porta Cabin uh, last year, uh, Valerie Connor described it as a temporary license on one's own building. Going back to the report of Brian Hand, aimed to test the feasibility of a strategic archive plan for project and detail the infrastructure and operational investment needed. He also attached the documentation of the state of the archive in late 97 and included a chapter comparing the operation of various other archives. He writes, there is at present a debilitating scenario with certain cultural practices, perhaps due to the fact that each new initiative, which seems to spring from Nova and leap to Nova, imagines itself as reinventing the wheel all over. Project's archive is a repository of histories, occasions, and lessons, success and failure, which are, if made more widely available, would definitely benefit as a benefit the cultural sphere. End of quote. Assessing the endangered collection of documents, Hand observes that much of the material that he had browsed with Wolfram members on a few years previously, like three, four years previously, had disappeared without a trace. The photos he attaches to the feasibility document show stack of materials dumped and scattered in corners during the final days of former building development. Um, needless to say that the planned 400 square meter archive room and some of the functional spaces, including the part-time archive, is never materialized. The Active Archive Slow Institution project has made an attempt, uh, the project has made an attempt to temporarily rehabilitate this absent archive and work with this absence in the gallery and transform it a place of questioning, hesitation, suspension, and retooling. From September until late December in 2018, the gallery, I from, transformed the gallery into a workspace and a meeting space where photocopied documents relating to the center's archives were studied and shared, digitization of different video documentation and conversations took place, as well as an initial mapping of the available and accessible public records and privately collected materials. That included the digitization and display of the video self-documentation of Sandra Johnston's performances within the offsite programming reserved in 1999, who actually had an exhibition, solo exhibition based on this material um, um, earlier this year. Um, the public presentation of the research mapping process was initially planned as three chapters. The first opened in January 2019, was titled The Long Goodbye Featuring New Commissions by Artists that Revisit Documentation from Their Own Archives and Present Possible Research Trajectories Within the Cox Archives. It focused on the late 90s as this marks a turning point in project's operational model and the finalization of the decade-long negotiations to provide Project Art Center with its current building. I think I just speak and would introduce a little bit of the next chapter, which is going to happen between the 6th and the 21st um, March. We're gonna host the second chapter of the Active Archive Soul Institution, and the title is Career in Progress Timeline that mas maps LGBTQ histories and even more specifically looks into lesbian, female identified, transgender, and feminist activism and practices. With a special focus on the 1980s, 1990s, and the HIV campaigns, Career in Progress timeline begins with an exploration into projects um, LGBTQ theater history. This ongoing body of research has been collated by artist Hannah Tierman, who was part of the Long Goodbye exhibition with a specific research and will be presented alongside her current investigation into GCN Gay Community News, I Create the Irish Queer Archive, National Library of Ireland, and the Out Magazine Archives. The timeline is identified as a tool for pooling, revisiting, and bringing into conversation various points of views, individuals, groups, and communities to unpack less visible and often suppressed, overlooked, and neglected aspects of complex historical events, challenging si simplified media representation. The display will, will change and expand through collaborative editing during the two weeks. The wider public are invited to contribute to the evolving timeline 
and its periodical updates. They are invited to challenge the power structures of canonized perceptual readings and to present concerns about visibility measurement, normalization, temporality, presence and absence, representation of otherness, desire and difference. During the two weeks of the host public viewing events, similarly to the long goodbye um, exhibition period, that invite the public to participate in conversation with guests who moderate closed readings of selection archival materials. Um, the gallery also gives space to series of workshops and gatherings. Developed in collaboration with GCN, Gay Community News, and several communities and activists and culture practitioners, Queer in Progress Timeline puts forward the importance of temporal, open, and inclusive archives that accommodate changing needs and foster a dialogue about queer archiving as much as queer archives, um, um, as well as archiving queer lives within, institu within institutional practices. It will highlight events that point at the social, political, economic, and medical complexities but also the absences and silences resulting from censorship limitations to document and preserve, as well as lack of space for sexual and gender difference. Exploring narratives of emerging and changing experience that might manifest through personalized collections of records, community-based archives, the project looks into questions of historicizing and memorializing and how querying archival practices can help us tr transform conventional approaches to archiving with a strong critical engagement with many of the issues um, present, including misogyny, homotransphobia, HIV racism, and various forms of discrimination and marginalization. I'd like to just um, add something uh, at the very end, which, which is more like a, uh, a mention. I, I don't have the time to, to expand on this, but I, I'd definitely like to mention an artist, um, a Dublin-based US American artist, Sarah Pierce, whose work um, with Project and in Project um, several archive-based works from the meaning of greatness and, and a variety of the metropolitan complex, a project that taps into locality using a variety of platforms, including talks, papers, and exhibitions and archives, whose work was absolutely um, important for, for conceptualizing um, active archives law institution. Thank you. <laughs> 